Watch your step, Eddie. That's hot stuff. Yeah, you better watch it, Torchy. Hot. You're telling me, and boy, is she sizzling. About 50,000 volts. Hey, Eddie. Huh? Was Salome a blonde? Oh, lay off. We got work to do. Yeah, and how? Some dame will be the death of you yet. Oh, and what a dame. <laughs> well, how did I know she had a face like a popcorn ball? Well, when you start mixing water with your women, keep away from hot wires. Hey, yeah. listen, we better get out of here before she calls the police. Come on, will you? Get us in jail? Come on, let's scram before that dame gets our number. She should have hit you with a rock. Hey, where's Eddie and the boys? Aren't they back yet? Say, with that strapping dame crazy torture along, they're liable to be detouring any place. Torchy's all right. They're all three swell kids. <laughs> I couldn't think more of them if they were my own. Hey, here they come now. Yeah, she was on her way home from the store. Yeah, boy, is she getting prettier every day. Yeah? Well, she just phoned me, and she was at home. Now, the next time you stall me like this, I'll just beat the bowels out of you. Now, you get busy, man that wagon. Well, where are we going, Pop? Well, listen, Sap, it's a cinch we're not going window shopping. Hey! Huh? Hey, you guys, send that platform back up here! <laughs> Whoa! He flies through the air with the greatest of ease, twisting his tail on the highest of trees. <laughs> oh, cut it out! Cut it out! Get that hoist up there, take him down. <laughs> What's 
big idea to let me hang up there like that. What do I look like, a monkey? Oh, keep quiet. Come here, you two. Come here. Now the super's called us all on the carpet. I got you young hyenas have got into another jam. I'll just skin the hides off you. Now, come on. Let's go on. Here. Hmm? Damn. I wonder how she found out her father had been called on the carpet. I sent for you, Foster, because... Uh, if that vinegar pan blonde was kicking about me looking in a bathroom window, I... Uh, well, I couldn't help it. What's this? Uh, well, uh, you see, sir, it, it was in the line of, of duty. Yeah, up in the air. And, and anyway, I only asked Eddie if, if Salome was a blonde. Yeah, and, and, and you see, uh, she thought that uh, he meant her. <laughs> Oh, he wasn't even looking at her. No, and, and even if I was, uh, Pop wasn't there. Uh, he didn't know anything about it. <coughs> yes, yes, well, uh, yeah, we'll take that matter up later. Foster, we have called this meeting to pay you tribute. Because of the many years through which you have set an example of loyalty, courage, and service, that has been rarely equal. It is men like you who have made this great organization possible. You taught young men how to respect their job, how to act with courage as well as efficiency. And there has never been an accident in your department that could be laid at your door. <laughs> well, I guess I was just lucky, that's all. All the men who founded this organization have gone. You are the last of the old guard. And I am proud to present to you our first 25 year service, Finn. Well, I... Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. It, it was just grand of you, Mr. Carter, and all of you to, to let me in on this. Yeah, us too. <laughs> Thanks, honey. You know, if I knew anything about speech making, maybe I could... Well, maybe I could tell you what this m means to me. You don't need to. The reflects in the service that little token represents. Look, boys. Boy, some lavalier, huh? Oh, and she <laughs> bought that swell. Holy smokes, it's got real diamonds in it. <laughs> Thanks again, Mr. Carter. And boys, I want you all to come out to the house to dinner, and we'll celebrate. Bye. Just a minute. Now, about that blonde. What's a lonely, a blonde? Ah, oh, dry up. No wonder we're still here. Hey, Pop! Yes? Well, have you got clearance on that line? Okay. Seepage from gas men, one of our manholes. Come on.
amulet. Manhole explosion, 23rd in Maine. Torchy, you better go with Pop. Oh, but I, 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 go on, Torchy. We can take care of this. Don't tell Ann unless you, well, unless you have to, and, and then, then get back here and let us know how he is. Okay. How are we going to bring it to her? I don't know. Well, I can't do it. Oh, well, it's got to be done. Well, you must have stepped on it to have beaten dead. That old car is acting up again. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I guess we did step on it. <laughs> help yourself to the soap and towels in the bathroom. I have to help Mandy. Now make it snappy. Almost ready, boys. Did it happen quickly? Mandy, you better look after her.
That's where the trouble is. Yeah, transformer burned up. Well, what do we do, boss? Well, we got a spare. Replace it. Eddie, you and Torchy go on up. Say, Slim, how about springing that idea about Ann on Eddie now? I don't know about having a girl about the house. You know Eddie and... Come on, we'll ask. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? Slim and me is getting darn sick of eating out of cans and slinging dish rags and making beds. Well, we figured with Slim's raise, we ought to hire a cook. And at the same time, help somebody out here that needs it now. Yeah, and besides, didn't we promise Pop we'd look out for her? You mean Ann? Sure. Well, the idea of having a housekeeper's all right, but... But Ann? Oh, no, you're crazy. Mm, you, you couldn't let a girl like that come and Why live not? With... Ain't she like a sister to us, huh? Ain't she safer with us, huh? Than she is over there with nobody but Mandy, who's worse than nothing, huh? Her row's getting pretty hard to hold. Maybe now that Pop's gone. Yeah, I know. Okay, we'll ask her tonight. Wait, we'll think it over first. Well, I'm listening. What's this great, dark, baffling secret about? Well, I, uh, well, that is, Anne, you see, we, uh, well, that is, uh... Well, what he's trying to tell you is, uh... We got a proposition to suggest. Yeah, we want you to come and live with us. Uh, wh what he means is, uh, well, we sort of need a housekeeper, and... And uh, we thought, uh, now that you're alone, maybe... Yeah, he, uh, you can have Eddie's room and, well, he can bunk in the parlor. Oh, you're sweet, all of you, but... But I couldn't because... Well, because there's Mandy, and, and this is the only home she's had since... Okay, bring her along. Well, where'd you put her? In that sink? Oh, no, boys. I'm afraid it wouldn't work out. I know you need someone, but... Oh, come on, Ann. Well, look, you three boys have lived together for a long time. And a girl coming in like this... Well, it might spoil everything. Why? Well, if you really don't know, maybe I'm wrong. See, we don't get you at all. No, I'm sorry, boys. It's impossible. You don't suppose Anne could have changed her mind? No, she hasn't. <laughs> she just came over to clean up your terrible house and to cook you one good meal just for a treat. Oh, boy, in a bed without bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Anne, you're a peach. <laughs> that open water parade. Yes, Mama. Go on. Yeah. Well, it certainly looks good. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, look at all the trimmings that go with it. <laughs> Thanks. Who's going to car? You. Well, I aim to please. Have I succeeded so far? Mama, you can sit at the head of our table any time, any day. You're perfect. <laughs> I think you've gone to far too much trouble for three irresponsible mugs like us.
phone's ringing. So what? Let it ring. Who cares? Well, answer it. Answer it? Answer it. This would have to happen on a night like this. Yeah. Of all nights. Hello? Okay, dispatcher, I got it. Lamp post down at Western and Cypress. Oh, you dinners. I'm sorry, Ann, but... I know, Slim. Dad was the same way when he was in your shoes. Hurry up, fellas. Anything could happen without him. I... Would you care? Well, you know I would. Well, if anything happened to any of you, I... Oh. Well, uh, will you be all right going home alone? Oh, sure. I have Dad's old heat parked out in the back. Hmm. Good night. Good night. See you soon. Give these boys a chance to fix me. I like the watching. Good. Hey, but that boy, the construction crew won't be here tomorrow. How'd it happen, officer? Oh, a guy necking a dame and forgot what he was doing. Funny what a dame can do to a guy, or a bunch of them for that matter. Yeah. You said something. I'll say you did. Say, listen, fellas. You know, you gotta be careful the way you act around Ann. Yeah, because she likes us all. One as much as the other. How do you know? Ah, she told me so. Well, you had a lot of nerve to ask her. Well, I didn't ex exactly. She, well, she only told me. Well, I got a lot of telephone numbers. I ain't thinking about Ann that way. Neither am I. Me neither. The only way she interests me is because she can cook. Come on, step on it so we can dive into that chicken. Okay. Boy, what the... Hey, you sure we're in the right place? We've been robbed. What? It's gone. Even my little black book with the phone numbers are 42 days. <laughs> hey, fellas, come here. Look, don't keep Mandy and me waiting too long for that interrupted dinner. <laughs> dinner! Yeah. Come on, hey, wait! What brought you home at this time of day? Well, uh, you see, we forgot our lunch, so I came back for it. Why, well, I put it in the usual place, Mr. Torchy, right there under the seat of the car. Come on now, what really brought you home? Do you know what day this is? Well, so far as I know, it's Mandy's cleaning day and my mending day. Well, it's our third anniversary. Anniversary? Yep. We've been under your wing exactly three months today. 
so for such a stupendous occasion, I brought you something. Oh, really? Yep. Put your lamps on that. Well, who is it? Well, who does it look like? Oh, I see it's you. Oh, it's so handsome. I thought it was Clark Gable. <laughs> yeah, he does kind of take after me, don't he? Mm-hmm. That is all except the years. Mine have got his stop. No, well, of course. You see, Ann, uh, that's a token or something of, well, of the way I feel about you, see? Ah, oh, thanks, Torchy. I'll put it on the stand by my bed. I'll look at it the last thing at night and the first thing in the morning. Oh, oh gee, will you? Oh, no, wait a minute. You better not do that. The other fellas might see it and, well, they'd get sore. Sore? Well, you know, they'd kid me about it. Oh. Why don't you put it under your pillow? Oh, don't you worry. I'll find a good place for it. Say, I used to know a girl who, who carried a Swedish picture and a gadget on a garter. Mm, nice girl. Who was the fella? You? Me? Say, do I look like... Oh, it? no. Don't be silly. Now, come on. Get Eddie's and Slim's lunch back to them. Well, well, you won't tell them about... Oh, no, I won't. Goodbye, now. You realize what time it is? Well, fellow has to learn something if he expects to get anywhere. But you've got to get some rest. You won't be able to do your work. Why? Well, I, I get enough sleep, I, but... But, uh, you know, these books, uh, they don't give me all the dope I could use. Oh, yeah, I don't want to be a trouble man all my life. I want to get in the test laboratory where real things happen every day. You know, new ideas and developments and where you meet men that, that mean something in the world. Men who accomplish things. Would these help? What? Say, they're just what I need. Where'd you get they them? They were dead. Oh, gee, that's great. I... I was telling Slim this morning that I was going to give them to you. Oh. Yeah, he's a great guy, Slim. You know, you know, after I get out of the test lab, I, I'm going to get a job where I can make lots of dough. Oh, there's something much more important than just making money. Well, what? Ooh, having a home. Having someone who thinks of you and, and loves you. Ooh, having something to work for never interferes with a man's career. Oh, yes, it does. Smart guy gets his career first and then worries about a, a ball and chain. Oh, I see. Well, I got plenty of time to get all set for the right girl when, when she comes along. Well, I wouldn't stay up much longer if I were you, Eddie. Slim says you have a hard day tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Good night. Good night.
Okay, fellas. Wake up. Wake up. You can put it in a locket on your garter. Come on, come on, wake up. Where am I? Hey, look. Look what I just found. Well, what do you know about that? Yeah, tomorrow's Anne's birthday. <laughs> What is this? Go on, tell her. <clears throat> and Miss Foster, we stand before you on this occasion to uh, <coughs> pay our respects. <laughs> Twenty years ago today, there happened a certain blessed event. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, well, how did you know? <laughs> Little bird told us. Uh, and now, 20 kisses apiece. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> From me to you. Oh, Dorky. <laughs> <laughs> Here's mine. Oh, Slim, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, there. <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> Go on. You better open them up. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> oh. oh, I know. Oh, Torchy. Here go all my good resolutions about reducing. Hey, with a shape like that, you've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, how about mine? Oh, good. I wonder what this is. Oh, oh, Eddie, it's, oh, it's lovely. <laughs> but how in the world did you know the size? <laughs> hey, cut that out, cut that out. Oh, that's how I measured it. <laughs> I see, young man. Now yours. Oh. What is that, a lily? Oh, no, it's an orchid. And the most lovely thing I've ever seen. Slim, how in the world did you ever happen to think of anything so perfectly exquisite? Well, I, I didn't know what to get you. And I saw that in the window, and, and it just uh, uh, sort of kind of looked like it was made for you. No. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. Hey, look at him, will you? Yeah. He acts like he's been, uh, you know, brushed by an angel's wing. <laughs> Boy, we're going to take this old town apart tonight and see what makes it tick. Oh, well, yeah. we are. I'm going to press my desk. No, I'm here tonight, huh? Well, you better hurry up, then. Oh, wait, give me all the things. Don't there you eat all that candy. Fellas. 
almost dead, and all this beauty's gone. But yours ain't, Anne. It never will be for me. Gee, fellas, you just came in at the right time. Ann and me are gonna get married. My gosh, that, 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 that's great. You're getting the best, honey, cause, cause Slim is tops all the way around. Thanks, Eddie. Come on, Stu. Don't you know when two's company and four's a mom? Slim, you had no right to say that without asking me. Well, then, uh, then why did you kiss me? You just wouldn't understand. All right. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Oh, yeah? I didn't want to hurt your feelings last night, Slim. I know how you feel, but... Well, that's just how it is. Huh. That's all right, honey. I can take it. It's Eddie, ain't it? Goodbye, kid. Goodbye, Slim. Hop on, fellas, we're moving. Yeah, and you're the guy that had so many telephone numbers. Skip it, do you hear? And lay off writing me. Oh, yeah? Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll lay off you for good. Okay, if you make that a promise, it'll suit me fine. I got something important to tell you after a while, lady. Tell me now. Not now. Hey, there's a kite up a number seven line. You better go get it. You drive.
Throw a fast sword over that line and see if you can saw it off. You better get the pot ready. I'll go up and lower it and we'll splice it off. Hey, Slim. I, I suppose you and Ann getting married will, well, will kind of bust things up between us. I don't worry, kid. Nothing's going to happen that'll be hard enough for you. Torchy, what is it? Tell me, quick, pull yourself together. It's Slim. Oh, it's awful, I can't tell you. Oh, what about Slim, is he hurt? He got it. 
He was up on a high line. His foot slipped, hit one of the hot wires, and he fell. And... and Eddie? Oh, Eddie's all right. He's with Slim. What is it, Eddie? I, uh, I want to quit the maintenance department. Quit? Well, you promised me a job in the test lab. But at this particular time... I want it now, sir. All right, my boy. You report to Dr. Michaels this afternoon. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Slims. Get me Dr. Michaels. Eddie. I want to talk to Torchy. Alone. But Eddie. What kind of a guy are you walking out like that? Well, I couldn't help it. I couldn't look at him. Don't look at me like that! You know how I felt about him? Yeah. When he wanted to say goodbye to you, you took a runoff powder. Well, I couldn't help it, I tell you. I couldn't look at him. I thought as much of him as you did. Maybe more. Yeah, you thought so much of him. Why, you couldn't wait to get here and break it to Ann! Oh, so that's what's burning you up, is it? You wanted to be the first to get here. Are you dirty little... Well, that's the truth, ain't it? Georgie, Eddie! So this is how deep your friendship for each other goes. Yeah? I know how deep his cockeyed friendship goes. Eddie! Yeah, and I know when I've had enough. I know now. Neither of you are to blame. It's I. I didn't mean to do it, but I broke up your friendship. Oh, I should have known it would never work out. Please don't quarrel anymore. We'll break up today, now. Anne, hey. I'm the one that's leaving. Yeah, and right now. Pop's gone. Now Slim. They're not gonna lay me out the way they did the greatest guy that ever lived. I've got another job. I'm through. The barometer is falling rapidly, sir. And we must be prepared for anything. Put the travel crew on overtime and reinforce them with men from the construction gang. Have every available man stand by. Yes, sir. Canyon. Okay! Cut line 48, Madeira Canyon. Yeah, lightning. Better get a crew out there before someone gets hurt. But the crews are all out. And cost patient too. Two. We've got to have more men. 10 
anyone you can find. That truck is caught in that bridge watch out on San Dimas Road. Yes, but I... Hello. Hello. Set line 184. Hold down a 10th and Western. Yeah. Emergency relay on 52. Come on the emergency on 641. I guess you didn't hear me. Get you on edge, don't it? Me too. It's a cinch human. Hello. Hello. Is this you, Torchy? I've been trying to get you for hours. Yeah, I had to plug in on a relay. Yeah, the telephone lines are getting it, too. Now, listen. Wait a minute. Give me that again. I can't hear you. There's something called up on line 413. 413? That's the feeder to the general hospital. Their auxiliary plant is out. You've got to keep that line open. Do you hear? Okay, I get you. Yeah, that hospital is full. Emergency cases. Step on it. Okay. Around the corner. Fork and maple. No one's there. All the men are out on call. What's the matter? It's Torchy. He needs help. He's on the feeder line to the general hospital. He can't do it alone. Eddie, I need your voice outside and I need you here. I'm sorry, Dr. Michaels, but, but I wouldn't be any use out there. I'm, I'm not in any condition. I'm, I'm shot. I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I, I thought you understood. I do understand. 
At this moment, you would rather be outside on a troublemaker than any other place in the world. Oh, now, this time you're wrong, Dr. Michaels. I... I'm through with the high wires. I... I'm not going! Uh, what are you doing here? It's Turkey. She's on the theater line to the general hospital. The phone's burning. She's in danger and needs help. Torchy. Torchy, so that's the reason that you came here? Yes. Yeah. Well, get this. I like my job here, and I'm staying here. Well, regardless of what has happened, I can never believe that you would act like this. You didn't deserve the friendship of Pop. You were unworthy of him, and now Torchy. I don't think that I could ever... Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you feeling, Dorothy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. Don't worry about Torchy. He's going to be all right. He's just a swell guy. A very swell guy. Oh, sugar. Texas, honey, how about that telephone number you all promised me? No. You all too sick to worry about telephone numbers. I reckon I'm never too sick to worry about that. I'll show you how sick I am. Uh-uh. Not now. Yeah. 